Hey friends, welcome to episode 67 of Sailing Sea Wind. Last week we left the beautiful Barry Islands behind after exploring a crazy beautiful blue hole, swimming in the crystal clear water surrounding Sea Wind, and generally enjoying blissful boat life. With favorable winds to sail east towards Spanish Wells, we weighed anchor before sunrise and set off the beautiful moon setting behind us. The feeling of excitement when sailing away to another new place never gets old. So far, we haven't yet crossed any of our tracks from the Bahamas last year. We're about halfway through our passage, so let's see how things are going aboard our little 32-foot sailboat. Okay, status report. Status report, we're motor sailing. Uh, because the wind is falling more behind us, which will usually be fine, but it's not strong enough to really fill our sails and keep us moving. At, we need to make at least five knots because we need to get into Spanish wells with enough time to really settle in uh, because the, there's a huge system moving through tonight starting tonight um, and so we just want to get there with enough daylight to get settled in and make sure everything's good to go. But I'm not complaining, it's so sunny and so nice out here and Starlink is working so I have a connection for work and it's just like... Anyway, it's just good. Oh, we're fishing. So hope for a mahi or a wahoo! Yeah. One of my favorite things to do in this world is take a hot bath with Epsom salt. Because it's so nice. I have a cold glass of sparkling water and eat a blend. You've done that? And read some poetry. Kale and white bean stew sounds good, or the, the salmon. I don't know, I think I might have this. Ooh, that sounds good. I'll have that too. Okay. We're pretty much out of food. Just a few, we ate the last oranges. We have the vegetables. No onions, we have a few veggies in the fridge. A few potatoes. A few potatoes. <laughs> That's it. So we're hoping to catch a fish today and then also we're excited to go to the farmer's market that they have here in Spanish Wells and really load up on some veggies. We are low on food, other than the canned goods. Katie just went into our backpackers stash and we're making a meal from that. Cheers! I get the broken one. Satisfying. You like it? Yeah. Cool.
it's pretty wild to think about how deep the water is sometimes. On the charts it just says 8,000, I think maybe 10,000 feet right now. And most of the time you're not thinking about that. But then suddenly, some, sometimes, suddenly you find yourself thinking like very literally about how much water is beneath you and it's like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, pretty wild. On Lake Erie, if your boat sinks, most of the places on Lake Erie, your mast would still be sticking out of the water. And so that's what we were used to for a long time. Now that we're in the ocean, it's much, much different. <laughs> so a little update, uh, we're doing about six knots motor sailing. Uh, we only have about seven knots of wind, but the sails are staying filled. Yeah, I can copy on that. Forest River, we are fishing Small fish, whatever it is. A what? A small fish. Yeah. Or is that a wahoo? This is not a wahoo? No, they have like a fin. Oh, okay. Not a wahoo, it's a barracuda. Alright. Okay, I'm watching this through the plug. Okay, another barracuda. Right through the nose. Okay, guy. About time we reel everything in, eh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, another barracuda. Catch and release. I'll get the other one in. Yep, I'm gonna haul the other line in. We will uh, we'll report back. We're heading through the cut here. Land ho! About to go through the Egg Island cut. And then that'll take us into the little harbor in the top part of Eleuthera. And then we're then we'll be like probably like eight, seven, eight miles from the inlet that we're going into in Spanish Wells. Cool. So that's all. We're super excited to be here. Katie's already looking at all the different things we can do. All the exploring. Very excited to be here. Entering Spanish Wells gave us a surprisingly different feeling compared to any other place we've been in the Bahamas. A curious feeling that left us eager to figure out why we feel like we've just entered another country altogether. Maybe it's because this island seems to be taller, offering more protection. The canal lined with mangroves to port and numerous docks and marinas to starboard was beautiful. Our dock, which will only cost us $15 a day, will offer us the convenience to step off the boat and explore this new place, and complete protection from the 30 to 40 knot winds forecasted for the next few days.
How you doing, John? Good to meet you, finally. Here you are. You want to go in further? Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll go in further. I just figured I'd stop us and then we could walk it. Pretty good, huh? You like that, Katie? Yeah, looks good. Okay. All right. We are here. I'm gonna tidy this up. This is our stack pack. We got these flaps that come up, and then this thing zips together. Got to get all the reefing lines, everything. I'm going to fit nice and tight down in there. We don't ever flake our mainsail because we figure if it wrinkles up in a different way every time, then there's no creases that might fold the same way every time you get a weak spot from it folding in the same spot over and over. Anyway, here it is. And then, let's see if I can get you on here. There we go, look at that. There you are. This can also be done from down there. Just when it's very calm, I come up here and do it because it's easier. <laughs> okay, so there's the mainsail in there. Reefing lines are thrown up top. All I do is shut. Oops. Places. And that's what covers our mainsail when we're not using it. So the stack pack was something that I built right before we left. And I hadn't even ever used it, let alone tested it or had any experience with, uh, with stack packs. I'd never even used one before and I designed this thing. We left and sailed 120 miles across Lake Erie to Buffalo, leaving to head south. And that was our first time using the stack pack. We sailed in with like 20 knots behind us, wing on wing, came to the harbor, headed up into the wind, and it fell into the bag like easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Hmm? He has oh yeah. Turned. First order of business. Watch out for golf carts. There we go. Trash. Here we are. Look at that. Ooh, look at you. Katie May. What are we doing? Let's go eat dinner. Are we going on a date? You look like you're dressed up for a date. Because I put pants on that aren't leggings? Yes. Yeah. Will you have this date with me? Yes, I'll go on a date with you. Okay. Which way? This way. This way. All right. We have made it to Spanish Wells, but you will have to wait until tomorrow to see what this place is about because we, for the first time in a long time, in a while, are going to go out to eat together. 
on a date. <laughs> All right. We hope you enjoyed. Cheers. All right, everyone. We got our coffee. It's a Sunday morning. You guys have seen this before. I shared it a couple times, I think, but I haven't talked about it a lot. This is our sourdough starter, and it's something that we've been nursing into a, a mature, healthy jar of fermentation so we can make fresh loaves of yeast free sourdough every week. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that you have to do uh, when you have a sourdough starter is you have to continually discard some of the starter in here and add new flour and water to feed it. And you have to throw away the starter um, or the or the discard. But there are a bunch of recipes because it's very active with bacteria and other things. Um, so instead of actually throwing it away, you can make things out of it. So today we are going to make some crackers, some discard crackers. Uh, it's super simple. The four ingredients are the sourdough starter, sea salt, um, herbs de providence, which is a blend of like rosemary and I think, what is it, oregano and anyway. So it's herbs de providence. You might have seen it in the store before. We happen to have some of it on board here, believe it or not, and melted butter. So those are the four ingredients, the salt, butter, uh, herbs of providence, or whatever herbs you want to use really at all, and the uh, sourdough starter. So let's get to it. All right, preheat your oven to 325. To melt chocolate or other things like butter on the boat, we just kind of put a little bit of water in the bottom of our kettle, put a bowl on top. Quarter teaspoon of sea salt. teaspoons of herbs de providence. Sourdough starter. I'm gonna mix this puppy up a bit. Okay, now it says to spread a very thin mixture. So now we bake this for 10 minutes. All right, now we're gonna score these things. Now that we're done using the starter, and it is discarded to almost nothing, we're gonna feed the thing. Half a cup of flour. Oop, can I get it down in there? Yeah, there we go. And so now this will be left to ferment and do its business. I do leave the cap a little bit loose just in case there's some gas that builds into here. We have our crackers, look at that. Okay, look at those crackers. Cracker. Ready? Mm -hmm. Because of our oven, I probably would take them out a little earlier. Oh, they're, they're too crispy. 
Mm. They just have that like dark taste, you know? Mm. Not burnt, just a little dark. Some of them are not though, but they're very good. Like that, I can taste the herbs. Hummus. Cleaned it, it'd be really good. Just a good snack too. Mm -hmm. Something crunchy and you know, salty. Mm, not really good. Baggie of crackers. Is this a video or a photo? It's a video. Oh, you said it was a photo. <laughs> love you. Like, take my picture. Okay. I love you so very much, and I'm sending you a big, big hug. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, good night, Grum. Bye. What do we got going on here? Well, this is pasta, and this pasta is different because usually we eat, we eat a mostly gluten-free diet, um, but Parker's been making homemade sourdough bread, and that agrees with us a bit better. Um, but as such, we did not provision that much pasta. Um, we usually get like lentil or chickpea pasta. Um, so we were getting pasta at the store here and they had this brand, it's by Cento, which is the same company that makes like the San Marzano tomatoes and stuff. They make this pasta called Anna and it's, um, imported from Italy and made with, you know, Italian wheat. So, which is different than American wheat. Um, so this pasta looks amazing. So it's the spinach fettuccine of that. And then you made the sauce with like olive oil, garlic, kale, cannelli beans, sun-dried tomatoes. Anything else? Hot pepper flake. Yeah. So that's the topping. So that's what's in front of me. And then Parker you, wants you me to try it. taste test it. Taste it's gonna be hot. It. I need to get a noodle. Mm -hmm. Or a couple. Mm. Amazing. So, so, so good. You're gonna love it. <laughs>